Hello and welcome to the channel. This video is about what is called anomalous constellations. Reducing a common fraction by removing same digits in numerator and denominator. In general, it is of course wrong, but we are interested in the cases when the result is correct. As shown by the examples you can see on the screen. Some ones go even further and strike out everything that comes into mind. Here are some of those challenges. The sixth root of 64 is of course 2. If we cancel root index 6 with digit 6 in number 64, we get square root of 4, which is also 2. In the next example, constellation applies to letters D, standing for differentials in derivative. Note that the line between these stays for minus. Then x times x is x squared, and we get that the derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared, which is correct, of course. In fact, these examples are just fancy tricks, while the video is about regular patterns. Therefore, as I have mentioned before, we will consider only abnormal constellations of common fractions. We start with the fractions containing two digit numbers in numerator and denominator. Here are two of such constellations. The results are, of course, correct. 16 over 64 is really a quarter, and 19 over 95 is really one fifth. Both have type AB over BC is A over C, where the arrow lines indicate that this is not multiplication, but a number composed of specified digits. I call such type of constellations inner constellations. Because if we write the denominator after the numerator, the cancelled digit appears inside. By reverting each of the fractions, we also get a correct result. However, this time the cancelled digit appears outside, so this will be an outer constellation. And vice versa. If we take an outer constellation and revert each fraction, we get a correct equality with inner constellation. This suggests that in order to get a complete picture, it is sufficient to examine one type of constellation. We will deal with inner constellations. So let's write the equation for an inner constellation. 10a plus b over 10b plus c equals a over c. This will be equation 1. All the digits are assumed to be non-negative. Moreover, we see that a and b must be positive as leading digits of two digit numbers. Digit c can't be zero either as the denominator of a fraction. Also, we should keep in mind that a, b, and c are decimal digits, hence must not exceed 9. So we come to the conclusion that a, b, and c are whole numbers in the range from 1 up to 9. Now let's multiply all parts of equation 1 by the product of denominators. Next, we expand the brackets and collect all terms containing 10 in the left-hand side, other terms in the right-hand side. Finally, 10a in the left-hand side can be factored out. And we get equation 2. So, we are looking for whole numbers a, b, and c, each in the range from 1 to 9, satisfying equation 1 or its equivalent, equation the thought of using a computer comes into mind. However, writing and debugging a code also takes time, while the equation looks pretty straightforward to be solved without our cyber friend, which, to be honest, can be really annoying. Note that when a equals b, the right-hand side turns into zero, therefore the left-hand side must be also zero. Since a is non-zero, then c equals b. 
So A, B, and C are all equal to each other, in which case the equality consists of same digit. Of course, in this case, both fractions are equal to 1, and the equality is correct. However, this is hardly what we are looking for. So we will assume that A and B are distinct digits. This implies that C is not equal to B, and since A and C are both positive, C minus B and A minus B must have the same sign. In case they are positive, B is the smallest of all three digits. In particular, B is less than A. Therefore, in the left-hand side of equation 1, the numerator is greater than the denominator. This is what is called an improper fraction, and its value is greater than 1. In this case, the right-hand side is also an improper fraction, so A is greater than C. Thus, we come to double inequality. C is greater than B and less than A. When A minus B and C minus B are both negative, digit B becomes the greatest of all three. Now the left-hand side is a proper fraction, with numerator less than denominator and its value less than 1. So the right-hand side is also a proper fraction, A is less than C, and the double inequality goes in the opposite order. C is greater than A and less than B. We see that in both cases, digit C has a middle value, which can substantially improve a computer code, but I decided to manage without a computer, and so I will. And another observation, this will be really useful. Since A and B are both in the range from 1 to 9, their difference is no more than 8. At the same time, A and B are distinct numbers, so the difference is no less than 1. Too much talking, right? So let's get to the real stuff. But before that, try to do it yourself. The left-hand side of equation 2 is a multiple of 10, so must be the right-hand side of it. At the same time, both right-hand side factors are non-zero, with the absolute value no more than 9. Therefore, no one of them can be a multiple of 10. The only way out is assuming that one factor is a multiple of 5, another is a multiple of 2. This gives two cases. Case 1. C is a multiple of 5. A minus B is an even number. The only multiple of 5 in the range from 1 to 9 is of course number 5 itself, so C must be equal to 5, and let 2K be the absolute value of A minus B. Given the range for absolute value of A minus B, K must be between 1 and 4. We get A equals B plus minus 2K, and substitute the values of A and C into the equation 2. After reducing by 10, we see that plus before k gives an equation from which it follows that b plus 2k must be a divisor of k. But k and b are positive numbers, therefore k must be no less than b plus 2k, which is more than 2k. And dividing by positive k gives 1 more than 2, which is of course wrong. This shows the sign before k must be negative. To get the right-hand side positive, we multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. To do that, we drop minus in the right-hand side and change the order of terms in the second factor of the left-hand side. Name the result equation 3. Let's free some space and move the equation 3 up. Note that the first factor in the left-hand side is digit A and it is positive. Therefore, the second factor, B minus 5, is also positive. Thus, b is no less than 6, b minus 5 is no less than 1, while k is no less than b minus 2k, therefore no less than 6 minus 2k. Moving 2k to the left-hand side gives 3k is no less than 6, so k is no less than 2. And since in addition k is no more than 4, there are three possible values for k, 2, 3, and 4. Let's try each of those. Assume k equals 2. Substitution into equation 3 gives 
b minus 4 times b minus 5 equals 2. We've got two consecutive positive numbers, the product of which equals 2. So we immediately conclude that b minus 5 is 1, therefore b is 6, while a is the first factor, b minus 4, that is 2. And c is 5, as we knew long ago. Substituting values of a, b, and c into equation 1 gives a solution. 26 over 65 is 2 fifths. Indeed, removing 6 in the numerator and denominator, we get 2 fifths, the value in the right. While reducing fraction 26 over 65 by 13, we also get 2 fifths. Now let k be equal to 3. This time, substitution into equation 3 gives b minus 6 times b minus 5 equals 3. Again, we have a product of two consecutive positive numbers in the left-hand side. While all my effort to represent 3 as the product of two consecutive positive numbers fails. The final choice for k, k equals 4. This time we have b minus 8 times b minus 5 is 4. The first factor in the left-hand side is a, and it must be positive. So b is no less than 9. But 9 is the maximum value for a decimal digit, therefore b must be 9. Too tough, but let's try, maybe it will work after all. So b minus 8 is 1, b minus 5 is 4. 1 times 4 is 4, and it matches the right hand side. And we have another solution. a equals b minus 8, which is 1, and the values of b and c are already known. The new solution is 19 over 95 is 1 fifth, where the right hand side can be obtained from the left hand side either by removing digit 9 or reducing the fraction by 19. And we shouldn't forget there is also case 2. This time in the right hand side of the equation 2, the first factor c is an even number and the second factor a minus b is a multiple of 5. So we write the c equals to k, where given the range of c, k is between 1 and 4. The absolute value of a minus b is in the range from 1 up to 8. And it is a multiple of 5. Therefore, the absolute value of a minus b is 5. So a minus b is plus minus 5, and a is b plus minus 5. Substituting the values of a a minus b and c into equation 2, and then dividing by 10, we again get an equation with plus minus k in the right hand side. Replacing plus minus by plus, we get an equation from which it follows that b plus 5 is a divisor of k. Since k and b plus 5 are positive numbers, k might be no less than b plus 5. But b is no less than 1. Therefore, k is no less than 6, which is wrong, because k must be no more than 4. This shows that plus minus actually stands for minus. And again, we multiply both parts of the equation by negative 1, by dropping minus in the right-hand side, and changing the order of terms for the second factor in the left-hand side. This gives the new equation 3. And again, we can clean up some space and move equation 3 to the top, and we also know that it should be minus in the expression for a, so let's write that a is b minus 5. And since a is positive, b minus 5 must be positive, so b is no less than 6. Further on from the equation 3, k is no less than b minus 2k, and therefore k is no less than 6 minus 2k. And we solve the inequation for k and get k is no less than 2. And since k is also no more than 4, there are three possible choices for k, 2, 3, or 4. Looks very similar to case 1, doesn't it? Assuming k equals 2, we again get an equation with the product of two consecutive numbers in the left-hand side and 2 in the right-hand side. So b minus 5 is 1, and this is a, while b is 6 c equals 2k equals 4. The corresponding solution is 
16 over 64 equals a quarter. Where the right hand side is obtained reducing the fraction in the left hand side by 16. Assume k equals 3 and I have a strong feeling that there will be no solution this time. Indeed, from equation 3 we get b minus 5 times b minus 6 is 3. So again the product of two consecutive numbers equals 3, which is impossible. And if the scenario really repeats, we should have a solution for k equals 4. What do we have this time? b minus 5 times b minus 8 equals 4. Again we have factor b minus 8 and it is positive. Therefore b is 9. The value of a is the first factor, which is 4. So the left hand side is 4 times 1 and perfectly matches the right hand side. And c equals to k equals 8. The corresponding equality is 49 over 98 is 4 eighths. This is correct because both fractions are equal to a half. However, why case 2 was so similar to case 1? Let's see if there is a reason for that. So let's compare case 1 with case 2. We have seen that in both cases factors c minus b and a minus b happen to be negative, which corresponds to inequality c is greater than a less than b, giving a proper fraction. And indeed, all the fractions we obtained are proper. The thing is, this is true for any inner consolation by one digit, regardless of the number of digits or numeral system. But I never tried to prove that. We also see that in both cases, the cancelled digits are 6 and 9. Another peculiar feature. Take first equalities for each case and add crosswise 2 and 4. We get the cancelled digits 6. Also, 5 plus 1 is 6. Similar applies to the second pair of solutions. 1 plus 8 and 5 plus 4 are both equal to 9. So the two cases are related and our objective is to explain this relation. Firstly, since both c minus b and a minus b are negative, let's multiply both sides of equation 2 by negative 1. In the obtained equation all the factors are positive, therefore it is more convenient to deal with. So let's substitute the new equation for equation 2. Now let m be the expression in the left brackets and n stand for the expression in the right brackets. Therefore a equals b minus n and c equals b minus m. Substituting the expressions for a and c into the equation 2 gives equation 3. For clarity, let's change the order of factors in both sides of equation 3 and make another substitution. What can you infer comparing equation 2 with equation 3? By comparing equation 2 with equation 3, we see that a is everywhere replaced by m and c is everywhere replaced by n, while cancelled digit b escaped substitution and remained intact. This means that triplet abc has been replaced by triplet mbn, which is therefore also a solution of equations 1 and 2. But m is b minus c and n is b minus a. Therefore, if triplet ABC is a solution of equation 1, then triplet B minus C, B, B minus A is also a solution of the equation. I will call it the adjacent solution. Let's see how it works. Take the first solution of case 1 corresponding to triplet 265 and find the adjacent solution. We get 164 corresponding to the first solution of case 2. Now let's do it in the opposite way. Find the adjacent solution to 164. And we get back 265. The second solutions of cases 1 and 2 are also adjacent to each other. This explains why the second case followed 
the scenario of the first case. Let's mention another interesting property related to anomalous constellations of fractions with two digit numbers. Take all the familiar fraction 26 over 65 and replace digit 6 with 5 sixes. Will it really be still equal to 2 fifths? Well, reducing the fraction by 133,333, we get exactly what we wanted. In fact, this works for any number of cancelled digits as long as it works for a single digit. In general terms, it can be written as the following. If AB over BC equals A over C, then A with several Bs over several Bs with C equals A over C, where of course the number of Bs in numerator and denominator must be the same. And again, the lines below the numbers indicate that this is not a multiplication by a number composed of specified digits. The YouTube videos I've come across take this fact for granted. However, in this video, it will be proven. To be honest, I am not quite happy about my proof, feeling that it can be done much easier. Maybe you can find a better proof. I couldn't find anything better than using induction by the number of cancelled digits. Let's try the starting equality as 10a plus b times c equals 10b plus c times a. As about the equality we are going to prove, let's introduce the notations for its numerator and denominator. p with index n is the numerator containing n digits b, q with index n is the denominator containing n digits b. And we are going to prove that p with index n times c equals q with index n times a for integer n starting with 1. In the base case, when n equals 1, we have p1 is just ab, q1 is bc. This evaluates to the starting equality, which is true by the condition. For the induction step, we need the accuracy formula for p and q. So we write p with index n equals 10 to the power of n times a, plus 10 to the power of n minus 1 times b plus etc and the final term is just b. p with index n plus 1 has one extra term. So we step left and right. p with index n plus 1 equals 10 to the power of n plus 1 times a plus 10 to the power of n times b plus 10 to the power of n minus 1 times b plus etc plus b. We see that the last n terms are same for both values of p. Therefore, the difference p with index n plus 1 minus p with index n contains just three terms. So we get quite a simple accuracy formula for p, where we've grouped first two terms by factoring out 10 to the power of n. Now let's deal with q. So we write the equation for q with index n and q with index n plus 1. Here the last n plus 1 terms match. Therefore the difference q with index n plus 1 minus q with index n is just 10 to the power of n plus 1 times b. So the recursive formula for q is really simple. Now we are ready for the induction step. We assume that the statement holds for index k. So p with index k times c equals q with index k times a. And we need to prove the similar statement for index k plus 1. To do that, we show that the difference p with index k plus 1 times c minus q with index k plus 1 times a equals 0. So we reduce the indices of p and q by applying the recursive formula. Then we group similar terms. In the obtained equation, we group first two terms and factor out 10 to the power of k. 
the expression e square brackets is zero by the condition, while the expression in the round brackets is zero by the induction step assumption. Hence, the difference is really equal to zero and the proof is complete. As an option, consider anomalous constellation in a non-decimal system of fractions with two-digit numbers in numerator and denominator. Someone unfamiliar with non-decimal systems can just skip this chapter. Quite obviously, factor 10 in equation 2 appears due to using decimal system. In a numeral system with arbitrary base n, factor 10 should be replaced by n. Using a familiar approach, it can be proven that digits a, b, and c must be distinct and positive. And of course, there should be less than the base n. Now, the absolute value of b minus a is positive and less than n minus 1. And since c times b minus a is divisible by n, base n has to be a product of two integers with absolute value less than n. This is impossible when n is a prime number, therefore there are no solutions for prime n. Also we've seen that each solution ABC has the adjacent solution B minus C, B, B minus A, which can be extended to a numeral system with an arbitrary base. This may suggest that the number of solutions is always even. However, a solution can be adjacent to itself which happens when a equals b minus c, from which it follows that c equals b minus a. In this case, two solutions merge into a single solution, which I will call a duplicate solution. Quite obviously, the total number of solutions is odd, if and only if the number of duplicate solutions is odd. Try to find out when the duplicate solutions exist and count the number of duplicate solutions. For a duplicate solution, in equation 2 we can replace b minus c with a and b minus a with c. So we get n a squared equals c squared. Therefore n equals c over a squared. Square of a rational number can be integer only if this rational number is an integer. So c over a is an integer number k, which is positive as c and a are both positive. Substituting k for c over a, we get n equals k squared. And since n as a base of numeral system must be no less than 2, k is no less than 2. We have found that a duplicate solution can exist only if the base n is a full square. Let's see if this is a sufficient condition for a duplicate solution to exist. From the definition of k, we get c equals k a. Then b equals c plus a equals k plus 1 times a. Let's unite last two equations as Equations 3. We have found that if a, b, and c represent a duplicate solution, there is an integer k no less than 2, so that the equations 3 are fulfilled. And vice versa. For a positive integer a less than n and an integer k no less than 2, the values of b and c can be selected according to equations 3. Since k is no less than 2, c is more than a. Also, from the equation 3, b minus c equals a. This means that the first and therefore the second equation for a duplicate solution are satisfied. Another consequence is that b is greater than c. So, a, b, and c are distinct positive numbers satisfying the equations for a duplicate solution. The only remaining thing is to ensure that all of them are less than n. It will be enough to require that b is less than n. But b is k plus 1 times a, and n is k squared. 
so we get an inequation k plus 1 times a is less than k squared. And we solve it for a. The right hand side of the inequation for a can be represented as a sum of integral part k minus 1 and fractional part 1 over k plus 1. Since a is an integer, the inequation for a is equivalent to inequation a is no more than k minus 1. Now we can add a condition to the equation 3. a is no less than 1 and no more than k minus 1. The k minus 1 values of n in the range from 1 to k minus 1, and each value gives a single duplicate solution with b and c defined from equations 3. So, there are k minus 1 duplicate solutions, and since k is no less than 2, k minus 1 is positive, so the duplicate solutions certainly exist, provided n is a full square. The number of solutions is odd, when the number of duplicate solutions k minus 1 is odd. Then k is an even number, and n is a square of an even number. Let's summarize the results. Duplicate solutions exist if and only if the base of the numeral system is a full square, n equals k squared. In this case, there are k minus 1 duplicate solutions. The number of solutions is odd if and only if the base of the numeral system is a square of an even number n equals 4m squared. In relation to that, I have to mention Professor Rolf Boas, in hope I pronounce the name correctly. The American scientist is renowned for over 200 published papers as well as for a good sense of humor. He was probably the first to take a serious study of such a silly topic as anomalous constellations. The research took place in 1970s when Professor Bors was at Northwestern University City of Evanston, State of Illinois, and used a computer at Bell Laboratories before the era of personal computers. The results were published in 1979 in a digest named Mathematical Plums containing 10 chapters, including Chapter 6 by Professor Bors, simply entitled Anomalous Constellation. In particular, the article contains solutions for the first 39 composite numbers. I don't possess the book, and I've never seen the article, though something on the web I could find. Here is the list made by Professor Bors in 1974, five years before the article was published. The list, as mentioned by its author, is a copy from a computer printout. As you've certainly guessed, it shows the number of solutions for each composite base up to 115. Surprisingly, there are much more than 39 items in the list. Let's take a brief look at it. As we already know, base 10 has 4 solutions. Base 12 has more divisors, so I would expect it to have more solutions. But nope, it has also 4 solutions. However, base 15 gives 6 solutions, despite having only 2 proper divisors, 3 and 5. The record holder is base 105, with 46 solutions. As we expected, an odd number of solutions give squares of even numbers, 4, 16, 36, 64, and 100. The smallest composite base Base 4 happens to be a square of an even number, and has only one solution. Is there another base having a single solution? I don't think so. The uniqueness of 4 is that this is the only square of an even number having one proper divisor, number 2. Therefore, if we write equation 2 for base 4, the only choice for factors in the right-hand side is c equals 2, b minus a equals 2. Moreover, since digits a and b must be less than base 4, the only choice for a and b is a equals 1, b equals 3. So, the solution is 
1 3 base 4 over 3 2 base 4 equals a half. Or using outer constellations, 3 2 base 4 over 1 3 base 4 equals 2. Since 1 3 base 4 is 7 and 3 2 base 4 is 14, the equalities are correct. We are moving to fractions with three digit numbers in numerator and denominator and start with cancelling two digits. In fact, we will consider only a particular type of such constellation. The ones you can see on the screen are beyond our scope. It could be more than a hundred like that, while I just can't afford as much. Therefore, we consider only removing two adjacent digits in same order. And again, the fractions can be reverted, turning inner constellation into outer constellation. We've already seen that two digit numbers in numerator and denominator can be extended to three digit numbers by replicating the cancelled digits. Let's see if there are constellations different from that. This time I decided to actually use a computer. Here is a small Java function. I tried to keep it short so it would fit on the screen and be somehow readable at the same time. The outer loop runs by cancelled digits forming a two-digit number from 10 up to 99 named CN. For each value of CN, we need to find corresponding proper and improper fractions. At start from number CN, we retrieve the most significant digit B and the least significant digit C. Variable A stands for retained digit in the numerator. Variable D is the retained digit in the denominator. To avoid all four digits being the same, in case B equals C, the range for A is reduced. In case of a proper fraction, A is no more than B and D is no less than A. For an improper fraction, it is vice versa. A is no less than B and D is no more than A. The code worked quite fast, 2 milliseconds on Core 7 Sandy HDT second generation year 2011. Seven solutions were obtained, however, four of them derived from already familiar two-digit case. And only three equalities represent something new. What is amazing, we have here both proper and improper fractions, unlike the two-digit case. We continue with fractions having three-digit numbers in numerator and denominator, however, this time we consider cancelling one digit. Again, with your kind permission, I start with the examples beyond our scope. These are constellations involving middle digit in numerator and or denominator. In the first two examples, middle digit is cancelled with a side digit. In the remaining two, middle digits are cancelled with each other. By the way, regarding cancellation of middle digits, one thing coming into mind is reducing a fraction by 11. It is well known that if the sum of a two-digit number is less than 10, when the number is multiplied by 11, the sum is inserted between the digits. So we take a couple of two-digit numbers with the same sum less than 10, for example, 27 and 36. Multiplying them by 11, we get 297 and 396, respectively. Where both three-digit numbers contain the sum of original digits, in the middle. So we write fraction 297 over 396, where cancelling middle digit 9 is effectively reducing the fraction by 11. Here is a completely different approach to cancellation of middle digits. Take one digit numbers A and B and multiply them by 11 and then by 101. We see that in the first case the digits were just duplicated, while in the second case we have zero between duplicated digits. So we can write three digit numbers as a fraction and cancel middle zero. The equality will be correct as both sides are equal to A over B. But again, all these examples are off the record, as what we are going to consider is Cancelling the rightmost digit in the numerator with the leftmost digit in the denominator. And of course, by reverting the fractions, we can turn inner constellation into outer constellation. 
when the leftmost digit in the numerator is cancelled with the rightmost digit in the denominator. Again, extending cancelled digit gives us an unpleasant favor. For example, equality in the right box is derived from already familiar to us equality 16 over 64 equals a quarter by extending cancelled digit 6. And again, we are looking for something other than that. This time, the function is a bit bigger and it worked longer from 16 to 18 milliseconds. However, this time we have only 6 solutions, while 4 of them are already expected and only 2 are new. This time all the fractions are proper. And this is guess what? The end!